now let me introduce our next speaker, uh, Turbo Machinery Technical Lead Ezra McNichols from NASA Thermal Management for Electrified Aircraft. Ezra McNichols is the Turbo Machinery Technical Lead at NASA Glenn Research Center, where he's worked since 2018. He is currently the Gas Turbine Thermal Management Technical Lead for the Power and Propulsion Subproject under the Advanced Air Transport Technology Project. His research interests are aerodynamics and heat transfer and turbo machinery, thermal management technologies for electronics, fundamental heat and mass transfer and machine learning applications for design and analysis. He holds a master of science degree in mechanical engineering from the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, as well as a bachelor of science degree in mechanical engineering from the University of Kentucky. Ezra, it's an honor to have you join us today. Over to you. Hi everyone. Uh, thank you for thank you for having me today. Um, so, I'll start by kind of giving an overview of uh, of Glenn and where thermal management kind of fits uh, into aeronautics. And then what I'd like to do is kind of go into some of the individual efforts that our group is working um, to kind of give you an uh, idea of you know what we're up to and specifically on projects where we're working with universities and businesses to kind of give you an idea of, you know, what those, uh, what those are. Um, so this isn't an all-inclusive list of projects, you know, it's an incredibly broad area, but it is one that, you know, uh, we at Glenn are kind of uh, specializing in. So if you could please, uh, next slide, please. So a little bit about NASA Glenn, we have uh, kind of six core competencies. Um, by core competencies, that means, you know, historically we have a lot of expertise and we're really well known in these particular areas. I highlighted the two that are probably the most applicable to thermal management for electrified aircraft. Um, that's air breathing propulsion. That ties in more to the, you know, hybrid electric systems. And then obviously the power, energy storage and conversion. Uh, are probably the two that are the the most applicable for the for the talk today. Um, next slide, please. So under aeronautics, uh, there are six strategic thrusts. So every project under aeronautics has to, you know, uh, fall into one of these categories or contributing to one of these areas. And it just so happens that you know thermal management for electrified aircraft falls into the two highlighted there in green. The ultra efficient subsonic transports and the safe, quiet and affordable vertical lift air vehicles. Um, the vertical lift or you know, the RVLT project um, is more so on the all electric. I think one of their concept vehicles has, you know, a still has a turbo shaft engine, you know, for the largest scale um, and the ultra efficient subsonic transport, you know, the, the smallest ones, you know, do look at all electric, but they uh, majority of the projects under there kind of uh, assume kind of a hybrid hybrid uh, electric uh, propulsion system. So those are the two areas that you know uh, thermal management of electric aircraft kind of fall under. Uh, next slide, please. So what are the challenges with uh, TMS for electrified aircraft? On the right hand side, I included kind of your you know your textbook, you know, uh, thermal management system there um, as kind of just an illustration of what we're talking about. So one of the challenges, you know, higher rated motors require more aggressive cooling approaches. So a higher load, and that means, you know, uh, typically, you know, you need a more novel and invasive technique. So your complexity increases um, and the heat that's generated from these systems is usually low quality. Um, so for low efficiency component, I mean, these are electronics, so low efficiency, by low efficiency, I'm still talking, you know, 97, 98, you know, percent efficiency, but on a 10 megawatt system, that's, you know, two or 300 kilowatts of heat that needs to be dealt with in some way. Um, and the temperature limits that we're talking about really limit um, the, um, the method to which you can reject that heat. There's not a large delta T that you would have in, um, in other systems that make the problem a little bit easier. Um, component reliability is considerably affected by temperature. Um, so these, you know, these are meant to go on aircraft, so they don't need to have, you know, hundreds of hours. They need to be able to operate for thousands of hours um, reliably. And, you know, what does that look like? Um, and thermal management plays a huge role in determining how long something can run before it needs to be taken off and serviced. Uh, different, and the last one, you know, each TMS is kind of unique to the aircraft and the mission that it has uh, has to fly. 
you have different load profiles for the electronics over the mission. Um, how do you size it? Do you size it for, you know, uh, takeoff where it may be the most demanding if you're all electric, or do you size it for, you know, cruise? Um, so it's a combined, you know, system level approach and, you know, a component level as well, uh, so that your system is as efficient as it can be. Uh, next slide, please. So specifically within our group, what we're uh, wanting to look at was um, how can we do this um, approach, you know, thermal management with a um, with AI and machine learning. Um, so initially, what we, you know, a while back, what we kind of um, conceived of was this idea where, you know, you can also use biomimicry in the process as well to get some insight or some ideas for addressing this. So. Uh, the workflow identified below, you know, you start with your problem definition, which, you know, defines what you're trying to solve. And B, we started developing tools to try and search for uh, possible applications within nature that could help with that. And then C is, you know, taking your, you know, your typical uh, finite volume, you know, your CFD uh, numerical methods and optimization tools to kind of hone in on, you know, a real design. And then D is, you know, selecting, you know, the best candidate and then finally applying it to that architecture. Um, um, next slide, please. So that's a very kind of serial way of looking at it. But if we wanted to do something that's more um, broad, I guess, and, you know, you can allow for different tools in the process, we kind of came up with this other framework called ideas, where theoretically what you would do is have a human in the in the loop, you know, up front, defining what the requirements are, and then you allow the AI and, you know, automated workflow to sift through the different tools you have for discovery, you know, uh, your simulations and your optimization frameworks, and give you a, um, a suitable design for your particular case. Um, and that this consists of, you know, digital tools and physical tools. Lately, we've been focusing a little more on the digital tools than the physical uh, right now, but um, as we, you know, are getting back to the lab, we are ramping up sort of the, you know, the physical tool aspect of that. And um, right now, a large effort is going into setting up the infrastructure for, for hosting this sort of thing. So you can think of it as kind of a glue of holding, you know, um, all these codes that we develop, all these models that we develop and the data that is um, generated, how do you glue those together in a cohesive framework so you can design, um, anything and so in this case what we're looking at is a thermal management you know all the tools we're working that all go into you know we're trying to tie them together and prove out this concept on like a a, a waste heat recovery system that we are slated to test in fy24 um, so next slide please so one of the projects we have right now with um uh it started as a fellowship with Penn State University is leveraging generative design for heat exchangers. So what generative design is, is upfront you provide, you know, your initial geometry and boundary conditions. And then you uh, basically, what it does is it mutates that geometry and allows it to morph um, intelligently. And you assess how it, um, how it performs. So in this case, what we're interested in is um, for thermal performance and aerodynamic performance, um, what it does is at the end, it uh, outputs, you know, as you can see there, a database of possible designs that will meet your goal that you have in mind. Um, and so it, it generates, I think in this particular case, I mean, hundreds or even thousands of possible designs that you could use. Uh, so Bashir, I referenced his paper down at the bottom. He proved out this concept, you know, like I said earlier, on a 2D, you know, uh, pin fin or, you know, finned uh, heat exchanger application, um, starting in, you know, the figure on the right, he kind of started as an initial guess, this two row fin, and then at the end, you know, it basically just hit run. And at the end of the day, he ended up with something that, you know, you would typically, you would expect, you know, it looks very airfoil, um, an airfoil shape, you know, the thin leading and trailing edge and, you know, the wider body in the middle. Um, where this transition, though, now is it's becoming an, it has now transitioned to an SBIR with the company where we're taking this tool that was developed. And now what we want to do is say, well, okay, I have aero and I have thermal. Now, what about structural? How, I, you know, there's nothing dictating the shape here when I consider 
you know, structural constraints and structural optimization. And that's the, the next step that we're taking with that company is incorporating, you know, structural topology optimization into this code. Um, so at the end of the day, you have designs that are, you know, you generate designs that are optimized with all three important uh, areas considered. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, this is a, another project with a um, PhD student from UC Irvine. We're using machine learning to analyze and design surface microstructures. And that what they do is they change the wavelength of reflection and emission from a surface. Um, so if you want you know, a particular surface to emit or reflect more radiation at a prescribed you know, uh, wavelength, this is how you do it um, by you know, um, manufacturing these microstructures on that surface. What he was able to do is uh, instead of using you know, your typical finite volume code, he replaced this with a machine learning model uh, that he trained. And now instead of looking at hundreds of designs, which was feasible with the finite element model, he can now look at thousands or tens of thousands of different designs for at a fraction of the computational cost. So it's a much, he can look at a much broader design space um, when we go into the reverse process down here at the bottom where um, we're going to input the spectrum we want and allow it to tell us what the microstructure needs to look like to get that. Um, so right now, this is, like I said, a fellowship. Um, and it still has a, another year or two left on it. Um, next slide, please. This is more of an in-house effort. We're looking at using uh, heat pipes to um, address turbine cooling, uh, more on the you know, hybrid electric system. Um, basically, what we want to do is to increase efficiency. We want to eliminate air cooling back in the turbine uh, if you can. Um, and so this is kind of a lower TRL effort. But it is an IRAD effort that's currently in a phase two. And as we you know, look to maybe propose a phase three, we are actually actively looking for um, partnership on this. And I, I happen to be the PI on this project. So if, if you're interested or have questions, you know, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Um, we're currently in, uh, we have the designs and kind of the tools um, that we trust well enough. Um, and now that you know, we're wanting to do low temperature you know, performance characterization and then on the right hand side, higher temperature um, because that data for oscillating heat pipes is very rare. Next slide, please. And this is a, uh, another thermal management system project that's more looking at um, the powertrain. So um, the goal here is to use heat pipes to redirect heat between multiple sources and sinks on the aircraft. And this is actually, um, uh, designed, manufactured, and proven. Uh, and there's the paper down at the, the very bottom of the screen. Um, so depending on where you apply this, you know, you have um, these systems that are generating heat and you have other uh, areas on the aircraft that could benefit either from a you know, maintenance perspective or from a thermodynamic improvement perspective by having heat applied to them. And so what this does is allow that heat to be redirect or, uh, redirected in a passive way. So you do not need any um, electrical controls to do uh, to do this. Um, it's all thermally driven. Uh, next slide, please. So what is needed? Like, what are we, you know, what do we need help with? Um, design and analysis tools. Um, that's a big one. Uh, advanced heat exchanger concepts, you know, uh, they want, you know, high thermal performance, minimal weight. Um, additive manufacturing is a big one. As you probably guess, a lot of the um, designs that we're coming up with, additive is going to play a huge role. Um, and even specifically when we look at like heat pipes, uh, we're interested in, you know, with additive, what um, what can you do to increase performance? Now you can locally tailor, you know, your WIC designs and properties. So we think you could lead to an increase in performance. Um, and the uh, another huge one is oscillating heat pipes. Um, this is a technology that has a lot of promise, but to be honest, it is, um, the biggest barrier is on the modeling side. It's extremely difficult to model this and get a good prediction. And that, that really limits um, where this can be applied. Uh, next slide, please. I think I'm running out of time. I wanted to provide, you know, a, just an overview of, you know, the uh, different programs for partnership that I'm aware of, you know, here at uh, NASA Glenn. Um, next slide, please. And finally, this is the link for, you know, Inspires where you put, you know, your uh, 
proposal, NASA will you know, issue a call for proposals and inspires and also the link to the SBIR STTR program. Um, those are the, uh, we, par we use both of those programs um, quite a bit. Um, we, we do a lot of partnerships. So um, please, you know, refer to those. And my contact information is on the first slide as well. So please, you know, um, don't hesitate to reach out. You know, I'll make sure you get in contact with the, the right people. So I think that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Ezra. That was uh, that was fantastic. Although I was having some flashbacks there to my thermodynamic classes from my undergrad about a hundred years ago, but uh, I, <laughs> I appreciate the uh, the refresher on some of those uh, equations. That was awesome. 